Hey everyone, it's Dale Demanchi, your Director of Technology here at Kel Williams and Oviedo. And I'm going to show you how to create a digital newsletter using the new MREA playbook. So I do want to let you know, the playbook is now on sale. There are $20. If you're looking to purchase one, just reach out to anybody in leadership and we'll be able to help you with that. I am going to show you real quick how to do a digital newsletter. Great thing about this newsletter, I actually already created a template for you all. So you are more than welcome to go out and download it. And I will show you how to download it through command, right? Because we are going to use command to send these out to all of our database. So first things first, we want to make sure that we understand what goes into a digital newsletter. And with these playbooks, you actually get a lot of information on what are the best practices, um, what are the best information to add into these newsletters. And I'm gonna go through a few of them just so that you will be able to understand what you should be doing for your own newsletter. If you do have the playbook, I am going to be using pages 69 and 70 to create the newsletter. I am also going to be using this newsletter playbook and stay tuned to the end of this video so that I can show you exactly where to access this playbook. When you're creating a digital newsletter, you want to make sure you know who the audience is and who you want to attract for this newsletter. So first things first is choose your audience. All right, because you can have newsletters for multiple different groups. Just make sure you know who exactly you're doing this newsletter for. So the second is select your topic. What do you want to talk about in your newsletter? What information does this audience need and want? If you know that type of information, if you know your audience, then you know exactly how to create a newsletter that is going to grab their attention. The third one is pick your frequency. So how often do you want to send them this newsletter? Is it going to be daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly? You choose. For the sake of this training, I am going to show you how to create a monthly newsletter. And I'm going to show you what type of information you're going to need in there. Number four is assign the work. So who will write it, who will design it, who will manage distribution, and who will grow it. The last thing is build your tech stack. So where else are you going to be getting this information? Where else is it going to be posted? All of that good information. When you go to page 70 of the playbook, you will see a digital database newsletter, an example of an agent in New Hampshire who's using a digital newsletter for her business that is actually working great for her business. And you are more than welcome to create a video type content for your newsletter for this particular agent. She did create a, she has like a real estate blog and she talks about these in those videos. And you can do that. I know some agents that create market update videos. You are more than welcome to add those videos also to your digital newsletter. There are a few examples of email newsletters. And I like the first example. I am going to be creating this template based off of the first one. Now it's not going to have all of the information on there, but it will have a lot of it. First things first, going through the agenda of your newsletter, when you're planning out your newsletter, you have to make sure you know exactly what type of information you're going to put in there, right? So for the newsletter that I'm going to create, I'm going to make sure that it has the market update for either Central Florida, Orlando, whichever city or neighborhood that I want to focus on. I'm going to make sure to add in home tips. So like articles from a real estate blog, different tips for their homes, for sellers, for buyers. You want something for all of them. I am also going to add in a we love our clients section, meaning any closings that I recently had. If I have pictures of my clients on the closing day, definitely going to add in those images there. Real estate articles, again, I will show you where to get these articles from. And the great thing about being a KW agent is you have free access to these websites with real estate information that you can use for your business. Featured listings, if you have specific listings that you want to showcase, you can add those in. And then also there is home worth. So if you want your clients to know how much their home is worth or if they're trying to find out, 
I'm going to show you where to get that link and how to add it into the newsletter. If you're asking for referrals, that's also another option to add in there. And of course, a call to action at the end of the newsletter. Another few things that you can add into your newsletter, you can add in any events that you're doing that's coming up. You can add in any major news that's happening in your city or your neighborhood. For example, I know the Brightline just opened up in Orlando, so that could be like a topic that you talk about or you show a video that you actually go and go over there however you'd like to showcase that. You can also do highlight a specific small business. Basically, you're, you're trying to show that you care about your community and you're involved within your community. You can add in crossword puzzles. You can add in a lot of different things. And again, within all of these playbooks that I'm showing you, you will get all of those informations and what different agents around KW and around the nation is doing for the newsletter that's actually working and getting a lot of engagement. Now I am going to switch over to command and I will talk to you about how to get access to my template that I created for you guys. So you will be able to access this through smart plans. When you're on command, you want to go ahead and click on this KW at the, on the left hand side and I'm going to go down to smart plans. Once you go to smart plans, I'm going to go on the library and I'm going to search for the smart plan. So you can either search under my name or you can search for the name of the newsletter. I'm going to go ahead and search under my name. Then I want to scroll down to where it says newsletter template. And here it is over here. I'm going to go ahead and click add smart plan. Then I'm going to download it into my library. Once you click download, it is going to go straight to my smart plan. So up here, you're going to click on my smart plans and you should see it as the first one. So newsletter template. So to edit it, you're going to click on that edit button. Um, so when you click on the three dots and then when you select edit, I usually click on this so that it can open up the template and I make sure that this is the template that I want to use. So this is the one that I want to add. I'm just going to click on the X, click save changes. Once it saves, I don't want to edit it within the smart plan itself. I'm actually going to move over to designs. So I'm going to click save for this smart plan and then I'm going to click the back button and then I'm going to go straight to designs. So once I get to designs, you're going to see the template as the first thing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that template. For a newsletter, you want to make sure you have a banner so that you could know or the people that are viewing it, your audience, to see what type of newsletter it is. So I just created this banner on Canva. If you don't have a Canva account, it's really easy to create one. It's a free account. I went ahead and created this template on Canva and I downloaded it. Once I download it as a PNG on my computer, I go back to command and I, I upload it. Since this is a template and let's say you want to download and upload your own banner, all you have to do to change it is just click on that image and then you're going to select on that pencil right above the image. This bar is going to open up on the right hand side and you're just going to click replace. It's going to show you all of the different images that were uploaded by me. If you click add images and then you pull it directly from your files on your computer, you can add that in. Once you select it, you want to make sure to select on it, click replace. So it's going to keep it the same size. I just keep the banner size 500 pixels by 300 pixels. Once I'm done with that, I click done. So once I have my banner, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the next thing. And that's going to be the market report. For the market update, you can use different stats you can either use central florida or you can use a specific neighborhood if you want to use central florida numbers i usually get that information from aura google aura i'm going to click right here where it says aura market reports i'm going to scroll down state of the market report it's going to take me to the next page where it's going to be current edition once i click on it it is going to give me this information you can create a separate flyer for this or you can just copy and paste this so if you're in PC, I would just use the snipping tool. If I have a Mac, I'm just going to screenshot and then crop it and use that as the image. Make sure you're always saving it as an image so that you'll be able to upload it into command. So once I do that, I'm going to add that in. Then of course, I'm going to do like a brief overview of what the market is about. Great thing about this is I can add in 
view full report. Let's say you're using a specific neighborhood to get this information. What I usually do is I go to my website and I search for the neighborhood. I'll zoom into the map until I see it appear and you can see view all neighborhoods. But I am going to click on that neighborhood. And once I see it, I'm going to select explore neighborhood. It opens up this page. It does give me this information. So it gives me the average home price, the price square footage, days on the market. It gives me the market snapshot. So again, days on the market, average home price, average home price, uh, the square footage. It shows me the sold stats, what recently sold, average sold price, and again, the price square footage. I can also just snippet this page or I can screenshot it and crop it and add it into the newsletter. If I want them to come back here and get this information, all I'll have to do is copy this URL right here at the top. I'm gonna go back to command. And when I scroll down to where it says click to view full report, I'm gonna click on that pencil at the top. You can change the, the button text right here where it says link to. You can either choose a landing page or a web address. Select web address, paste in that link in here and then you click done. Now I'm gonna resize this, stretch it out. So now when they click here, it is gonna take them directly to that page on your website. So the next thing is gonna be home tips. So I like to add in a tip about the season that we're in. And I will show you real quick where you can get real estate blogs where you can use on your newsletter. And the great thing about this, if you're a KW agent, you will have free access to this. So the website to go to is Homekeeper, you're gonna sign in. And if you don't have your logins, just let me know and I will be able to help you find it. You're gonna log in, it's gonna take you to the portal. And all the way on the right-hand side, you'll see shareable links URL and you're gonna see blog. Click open link. It's gonna take me directly to all of the different blogs that are created. And this is linked with my information. If you wanna add in your picture, if you wanna update the information on there, you can do all of that within the dashboard. Go into the settings and change that information. You can scroll through and check all of these articles and within a couple of days, these articles are already updated. It's automatically there for you. When I scroll through and I'm looking for different articles, here's the article that I use. So five tips for fall home maintenance. Click on it, it opens up the article. I like to read through it just to make sure that this is something that I wanna use. And all I did was just copy this, went back to my command and on this text box and I paste it in here. You can change the font, you can change the size. Once you're done, you just click done and it updates. Because I put a portion of the article on there, I do want them to read the full article, click on the pencil. And because this is already branded to me, copy this URL at the top. So copy. I'm going to go back to my command under link to, I'm going to click web address and I'm going to paste it in here. Then I'm going to click done. The next thing is going to be client. So if you have any client images, anything like that, you can go ahead and upload them on there. Now it is going to upload only as one picture. And this is where Canva comes in because now I can go back to Canva. I can create a template. I'll usually like open up another page. I'll go to elements scroll all the way down and where it shows grids i can either upload a grid or i can use the frames whichever one if i have three pictures let me see all and then i'm going to select three pictures and then i can upload the three pictures here i download it as a png and then i go back to my command and i upload it as an image then i added in a text box on the bottom i click on the pencil and then i enter in whatever text that i want if you like to add in more images, you can always click anything on the right hand side, click, hold and drag it over. And wherever you see the green, that green line is, that's where it's going to paste. If there's like an image that you want to upload, you can just click on it. Or let me click on this one, click save and it uploads. You can also click, click on these boxes that's around the image to resize it. If you don't want it anymore, you can just click on the trash button and then it will delete it. Same thing for text. You just drag it over and then you edit it and you add in your text. If you don't want it anymore, you just click on it and then you trash. One thing I do want to let you know is whenever you do make a change on the template to always click save, just so that if something happens, then you can always go back to the version that you saved before it started having issues. Um, another thing before I move on is 
whenever I'm done doing something, let's say we already did like the first four lines of the newsletter and I want to make sure that it looks good on um, email or a phone or tablet if they're opening it on that I want to make sure that it looks good what I'm going to do is just click on the eye and then I can see exactly how it's going to show up and it does so I'm going to go ahead and move forward I'm going to click save one more time the next thing is going to be real estate articles again I created this image right here on Canva added in two pictures and then I added in the title of the real estate article. There are other websites that you can use to get real estate information and real estate blogs. Another one I also like to get information from is keepingcurrentmatters.com. Once you get to this page, you're going to click all the way at the top to real estate blog and then you will have access to the different articles that's there. When you click on that, it is an article, it does have the information on there. You can scroll down and find the information. I know a lot of you guys have the new websites too and they do have that real estate blog section on your website. You can start adding in different articles from Homekeeper into your website and have that link and include it in here. You can use this link and you would just add in that link in here. The next thing is gonna be featured listings. Once you have those featured listings, click on new listings in Orlando. I'm gonna go back to my website again. I can see listings, right? Now, if I'm focused on a specific neighborhood, like this neighborhood right here, Eagle Creek, let's say I want them to see all of the homes in this neighborhood. And if I scroll down, I can see there's different homes that's available. And this is current and very up to date. It is connected to the MLS. So now I can use this URL. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna edit this, and then instead of saying Orlando, you can do whatever neighborhood that you're focused on. I'm gonna add in the web link, then I'm gonna save that. And now when they click on that link, it is gonna take them directly to that page for Eagle Creek listings. So right below that, I did add in what's your home worth, and then click here to request for property valuation today. I usually use Cloud CMA with the MLS just because it is connected to me and once they enter in their information in there, I do get a notification to my email saying I got a new lead and I have their information right away. And on top of that, they also get the CMA report right away once they enter in their information. So if you didn't know about that, that is a quick tip. So I'm gonna go to Stellar mls.com once i sign in i'm going to go to the products and services section and then i'm going to scroll down to where it says market and listing data cloud cma is over here and again it's free once i click on it it is going to take me to this home page but if you never got in it is going to ask for your information i made sure to update my profile i added my picture correct brokerage all of that information is on there so now when i click on my image or my initials at the top depending on how it looks for you i am going to click on lead generation it is going to take me to where it creates the landing page for me i can view that landing page so I'm just gonna copy this link. I'm gonna go back to my command. And for this image, you can't add in links to it. So I'm gonna click on the pencil. I'm gonna link to web address and I'm gonna paste it in here. Then I'm gonna click done and it's gonna take them directly to that CMA page where they can add in uh, their property address and get that CMA. The last thing I added to the newsletter is work with us and explain why they should be working with me as an agent. And then I want them to always contact me at the end. I could actually put in like a little tab on the bottom where it says view my website today or I can put in a QR code. So there's different varieties that you can do for your newsletter. It is your newsletter, so make it your own. You can do newsletters for whatever you'd like. You can do one for your database. You can do one for a specific neighborhood that you, you live in, a neighborhood that you farm. Those are the main things that you can add to your newsletter. Again, this is a basic newsletter that you can use and you can go in and edit it to however you like, but it's already created for you so that if you're looking for one to start off with because you don't want to create one from scratch, this is the perfect one to use. So. Once I'm done with everything, I'm gonna click save. And just in case, I'm gonna click on the eye to make sure that this is exactly how I want it to be. And everything looks great. So I'm gonna click on the X. I can send myself a test version, which I'm gonna do right now. So I'm gonna click send test email. So now that should be sent to my email. Test email is gonna be coming from you. So when I click on it, 
I can see exactly how it's going to look like. Now I'm going to click on it to make sure that it actually shows up. So now I'm going to scroll down, keep viewing. I'm going to click read full article and it does take me directly to that article. Same thing for the listings. I click on that and it takes me directly to that website, which is perfect. So once you're done with the newsletter, I'm going to go ahead and click save again and I want to exit out and save changes. I'm actually going to go back to smart plans because now I want to add that in. I'm going to go to the newsletter template. If you downloaded this template, I did add in the subject line, your local real estate insider. On page 15 of the newsletter playbook, there is its step two design and plan. It does give you different ways to grab attention to your newsletter. And one of the things it says for number two, it says engaging title. It says stay away from calling your newsletter Jason Abrams newsletter. Instead, include the problem you are trying to solve or information you are providing. Try something like Jason Abrams Real Estate Insider. So again, if you're focused on a specific neighborhood, you can add in that neighborhood and say your name, Real Estate Insider, or you can do the 32837 News you can use. So you can do it, just make it very appealing and that's definitely gonna grab a lot of attention. It does say clear and bright graphics and this is another reason why I made sure to add in those different graphics from Canva that I created. And then you obviously want to, to have a call to action. So either call me or visit my website, you can have that information on there and then contact information. When you have your subject line, your local real estate insider, um, it is gonna have the old template, just make sure you upload it to the new template. So when you click on the three dots, click on select new design, you're gonna select on the most recent design that you just did, click got it. I'm gonna click save again. I'm gonna click on the X and save changes. Then I'm gonna click save. You can either use it as a smart plan or you can actually do it through email campaigns. That's pretty much it with creating the newsletter. When it comes to the newsletter playbook, I said that I was gonna show you how to get access to this. You're gonna click on connect at the top of your page, right next to command. You're gonna to go to the search bar at the top and type in newsletter. Once you start typing in newsletter, you'll see playbook V3. Click on that. This first page right here, this is what I'm gonna use. Click on that and you're gonna see the playbook on the screen. To download it, all you have to do is scroll down and you're gonna see this cloud button and it's gonna say download. So I hope this session really helped you guys create your newsletter and you're all ready to start sending out those newsletter by next month. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. But until then, I'll see you guys on the next one.